Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. The Lord is saying today, I want you to stop overthinking your future, my child, for it is in my hands. And stop replaying the failed scenarios of what could have happened, what should have happened, and what ought to have happened. All this does is feed your self-doubt and you start seeing the good in everyone else except yourself. Remember, when you yield yourself to me, I have control. But I cannot take the wheel of your life until you get out of the driver's seat, my child. So what are you waiting for? It's time to let go and let me move in your life. You were created for a purpose, my child. For there is a higher calling upon your life that goes beyond what you have even may think about yourself at times. You have asked yourself, what was the purpose of your existence? You were meant to glorify me in all you do. How can you do that, you ask? First, one must be born again, not to just enter my kingdom, but also be awakened to your true calling. Yes, I desire you to have new purpose, so as to do greater exploits for me, my child. Just keep on keeping on in me and allow me to deal with all the haters one at a time. While they are busy trying to pull you down, they are giving you the free publicity to expand your territory in me. Remember, even when you are doing something of worth for my kingdom or I am about to elevate you, demons will come to distract you and take you off course. Yes, they will do everything to get you to quit off my path that I have before you. Therefore, do not let the distraction take you off course, but stay focused on me. See, my child, the enemy does not gain much from coming against your money or your material possessions as much as he gains when he attacks your mind. Yes, my child, he plans to help create strongholds of wrong thinking within your mind. He does this to have legal right, to have legal ground. Yes, he wants to rob you of your peace, your mental health, and your godly relationships. He wants to create doubt in your minds so as to rob you of your peace. Therefore, understand your attack goes beyond your material possessions, for the enemy of your soul is attacking more the things that cannot be seen, my child. Remember, I am greater than he that's in the world, greater than any problem, greater than any difficulty, greater than the devil himself, greater than anything that you will ever face, my child. What matters is not how others see you, but rather how I see you, my child, and that you see yourself the way that I created you to be. That's right. I created you for greater things. Yes, I've created you for a specific purpose. Therefore, when you wake up every morning knowing that I am with you, you will realize more each day it's never about you. Rather, it is I, the hope of all glory that lives within you. Yes, the line of the tribe of Judah that enables you by my grace to strengthen you each day to face every single challenge that is thrown your way, my child. Yes, you shall overcome everything the enemy attacks you with today because I am with you. That's right. And he who is greater than he that is in the world. For I know the plans that I have for you, my child. Plans to prosper you. Plans that you will not be hurt, but plans to give you a future and a hope. That's right. You may not see it now because you're struggling at the moment, but I have never left your side. For at times I will allow the weapons to form, 
but I will not allow them to prosper. For you are protected and I have the provisions you need and I know when your seasons change and when they will change. As you walk through the remainder of this day, my child, allow the goodness of my love to fill you, the beauty of my peace to surround you, the presence of my hope to satisfy you that you may walk in faith knowing that all the good gifts that I have for you will shine forth even in this day. Be at peace, my child. Shalom. Praise the Lord, precious saints. The Bible says, according to 1 John 4, verse 4, it says, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah, precious saints. I want to point out two very important points within this verse, which is addressed to the believers. And if you have not welcomed Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit into your life, then none of these will apply to you until you make that decision. But God is always making a way of escape and extending his invitation of salvation to each person. So this is for the believers. First, God is in you. Not far off somewhere. Yes, God is in heaven, but that is not the only place he is. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God now has his dwelling place in you. You don't have to try to reach God. He is right there. What you need to do is to cultivate an awareness of his presence. This, along with communication, in the way to develop a closer relationship with God. How do we do that? We spend time in worship. We spend time in devotion of his word. We spend time praying to him, knowing that God lives in you and that he loves you should banish all fear from your life. Fear of failure should have no place. Fear of what other people think should not bother you. Fear of problems that may come up should not even be of a concern for you have God living in you. And the Bible says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, according to 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. God lives within you. See, when we become born again, the spirit of the living God comes to dwell within us and then starts the process of sanctification that God may consecrate holy vessels set apart for him to do great exploits. God wants to do that within you also. But let's look at the second part. God who is within you is greater. That's right. He is greater than any problem, as what we have just said from the Lord's word. He is he's saying that he is greater than any difficulty, greater than the devil himself, greater than anything that you will face because the Bible says, according to 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that's in the world. See, this is the word of God. We must embrace it. We must live in the light of God's word. We must meditate on God's word and we must speak it out. We must resist any contrary thought that the enemy may try to whisper in its place of its thinking because God lives within us. That means that everything that the devil is trying to whisper into your ear today is a lie. It is a lie. When Jesus forgives, you are forgiven. When you are covered under his blood, you are protected. He is even said, I'll make a way of escape for whatever temptation that must be coming through your life at this time. I want you to say this out loud. God who is in me is greater than anything I will ever 
face. The greater one is in me. Hallelujah. Let us pray, saints. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your warriors are here today and they are preparing for battle. Today, we claim victory over Satan by first putting on the whole armor of God. We put on the girdle of truth. May we stand firm in the truth of your word so that we will not be a victim of Satan's lies. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. May it guard our heart from evil so that we will remain pure and holy, protected under the blood of Jesus Christ. We put on the shoes of peace. May we stand firm in the good news of the gospel so that your peace will shine through us and to be a light to all we encounter. Lord, we pray also that we take the shield of faith, that we may be ready for Satan's fiery darts of doubt, denial, and deceit, and every other attack of the mind, so that we will not be vulnerable to spiritual defeat or any attack of the mind at all. We put on the helmet of salvation. May we keep our mind focused on you so that Satan will not have a stronghold on our thoughts and he will not help build one of those strongholds of any stinky thinking. We take the sword of the Spirit. May the two-edged sword, according to Hebrews 4.12, that is sharper than a two-edged sword, that is sharper, that divides between bone and marrow, soul and the Spirit. May this two-edged sword of your word be ready in our hands so that we can expose the tempting words of Satan. And as Jesus, and Lord, as you spoke in the desert, you said, it is written that we may also say that. By faith, your warriors today have put on the whole armor of God and we prepare to live this day in spiritual victory. We are thankful, Heavenly Father, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds to casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and to bring every thought into obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, in our own life today, we tear down the strongholds of Satan and we smash the planes of Satan that have been formed against us. We we tear down the strongholds of Satan against our mind and we surrender our mind to you. Blessed be the Holy Spirit who is with us. We affirm, Heavenly Father, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And we break and smash the strongholds of Satan formed against our emotions today. Lord, we give our emotions over to you. We smash the stronghold of Satan formed against our will today. And we we give our will to you and we choose to make the right decisions of faith. We smash the strongholds of Satan formed against our body today and we give our body over to you. We recognize that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit and we rejoice in your mercy and your goodness. Heavenly Father, we pray also right now and we pray that through this day that you would quicken with in us and show us the way that Satan is hindering and tempting and lying and counterfeiting and distorting the truth within our life. Enable us to be the kind of person that would please you. Enable us to be aggressive in prayer because you said the heavens suffer in violent and the violent take it by force. Enable us to be aggressive mentally and to think your thoughts after you and Lord have our thoughts above and not on the things of this world and to give you your rightful place within our lives. Again, we know that we are covered under the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray that you, blessed Holy Spirit, would bring all the work of the crucifixion, all those things of the work of the resurrection, and all the work of the glorification, and all the work of Pentecost into our life today, and we surrender ourselves to you. We refuse to be discouraged. You are the God of all hope. You are our provision. Your power by resurrecting Jesus Christ from the dead is living within us and is also coming against and we claim it over every way of your victory over satanic forces today that have been active against us and in our life and we reject those forces and we pray now in the name of Jesus Christ that we have the victory in the finished work of the cross. Lord I 
pray that you would touch each person from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Fill them, touch them, fill them, touch them, fill them, touch them, and renew them with your Holy Spirit. Revive their soul today that they may know you, that they may know their God and do great exploits. Touch them and fill them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I've also got some uh, words of prophecy and also words of knowledge. There is someone that has an issue with their teeth right now, and God is going to come and touch that area of your teeth, whatever that issue is now. So just place your hand upon your mouth and get ready to receive the anointing and healing of God right now. Come and touch that person, Lord. Come and touch them. Come and touch them. Come and touch them in Jesus' name. There's also someone that having nose issues. If you're having any issue with your nose, I want you also just to place your hand over your nose right now and also receive healing for any issue relating to your nose right now. Heal them, Lord. Touch them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Touch that person today in Jesus' name. There's also somebody that has a blood condition. Whatever that blood condition is, I declare it healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. There's also someone that has an issue with the valves within their heart. The valves within their heart right now. Whatever those valves are that are, that are having issue or blockages or anything like that, I speak healing over your heart right now, even as you place your hand upon your heart right now. Receive supernatural healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing right now. Any other pain in your body, I speak healing over that. Just place your hand there. I speak healing right now. I speak healing right now. I speak healing right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm also going to speak a creative miracle right now that someone is going to receive supernatural weight loss. Supernatural weight loss. If that is you, then God, I pray, even as you go into the fasting this weekend, you will find that as you come out of the fast, there's going to be a supernatural change your way yourself you're like wow i just lost 10 pounds i just lost five pounds whatever it is you're going to see it and it's going to be a supernatural weight loss so heavenly father i pray in the name of jesus christ i also speak to that person also that i spoke this word a few times ago and it said the lord showed me that uh, some woman that had their breast was larger than the other and there was some issue with that lord i speak divine creative miracle to that person, that d d divine creative miracle to that person right now. Receive it in Jesus name. Receive it in Jesus name. Receive it and grow back to the perfect design of God now in the name of Jesus Christ. I also saw uh, a train incident, a train incident. And then I also saw a set of traffic lights, which represent, I would say, signals for that train. So whatever that incident is, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever it is, it will not bring any harm to those people. There will be, Lord, minimal, if not no casualties at all in this particular train incident incident that will take place in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I declare right now, I declare it right now, I declare it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would surround your people. You would touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And if you've liked this utterance today, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell if it's not coming through. You can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Go and click onto our Facebook and follow us there. Like our page. You can also go and follow us on Instagram. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. Don't forget this weekend, three days fasting, the three-day August fasting people where God is going to move and he wants to also move through you. So if you haven't already anticipate to um, join, make sure you prepare 
to participate this weekend so you can be blessed. Tell all your friends, tell someone, get someone to join and also forward this post to someone that needs to be blessed today. And don't forget in September, we've got the 10 days fasting and every Friday is the Corporate Friday fasting. You can share your testimonies with us at pst.robert.com. Clancy uh, at Outlook.com. You can see the uh, email address there as I speak. Uh, So may the Lord bless you uh, from my family to yours. God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you, precious saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom.